Hello, everyone. Welcome to 8PointMMA.com's podcast number seven, our exclusive interview with the bad boy Leonard Garcia. Leonard is a top fighter in the WEC's featherweight division and has fought the world's best. Roger Huerta, Jens Pulver, and Mike Brown are just a few of the guys he has fought in his long career. Hello, Leonard. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for your time today. Thank you guys for having the interview. Anytime. Now, you have an upcoming fight at WEC 47. How's the training camp going? It's going real well. You know, um, I, I feel like uh, like my body's finally starting to mature, and uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm learning a lot. You know, I've only been with uh, Greg Jackson for three years, and uh, I think it's finally all coming back together. You know, it's, uh, you know, with, with, with all the new things that we got going on, uh, um, I'm seeing different varieties of people, and uh, it's helping my game out a lot. And I, I feel really good about this fight because I'm fighting a striker, and uh, everybody knows, you know, that my best fights are always against strikers. Right, absolutely. They're always exciting. What do you think about your opponent, Diego Nunez? Um, I, I think he's a really tough guy. You know, he, he's only he's only been beat one time, so um, he's not used to you losing. And uh, when you fight somebody like that, you really have to take him to the you know to a really far breaking point. And uh, you know, those fights excite me. It, it, it's the fights where you fight people who uh, who are used to losing, and you kind of slack off a little bit, and you know, they get a little bit, um, you know, you, you start to see other things in the future rather than just looking at the person in front of you. So uh, Diego's a really good opponent for me, you know, and uh, I know he's going to come hard and he likes to stand, so uh, it's really exciting for me. Right. Now, you mentioned the future. Uh, with a convincing win here at WEC 47, you'd be right back in the mix. Um, who would you yeah, yeah. like to fight next if you won? Um, you know, hey, I, I, I could continue asking for Jose Aldo. I mean, I, I think me and Aldo would be a great fight. Um, of course, you got to get you got to get into position for you know you got to position yourself to get a title shot. But uh, that's that's one of the fights that, that I'm really looking forward to doing in the future. Um, but as as of right now, man, there there's so many names. You know, there's Mike Brown, there's uh, Uriah Faber, Rafael Sunsal. Um, you know, those those are three of the top guys who I definitely have uh, have in my in my sights for sure. You know, Brown because he has a victory over me, and I'd really like to get in there and see how I do against him. You know, without without uh, having all the nerves of, of fighting for the title, you know, just just get in there and, and, and mix it up with them again and, and try to avenge my defeat. I mean, my loss. And, and uh, you know, Uriah's been a name that's been around for forever, and and uh, he's he's also a tough guy. But um, you know, it, it, at, at this weight class right now, man, it seems like every fight could be for the title. So it, it's a great weight class to be in. Yeah, it's absolutely stacked, and I think any of those guys you mentioned would make amazing fights against you. Definitely. Now, this will be your uh, first fight in Ohio. Are you excited to fight in a new state? Yeah, definitely. I actually have a family in Ohio, so uh, it, it, it's not a homecoming for me, but I, I, I'll have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of fans out there, and, and uh, just family support always makes the fights a lot better. Um and just going to a new place is always exciting, but but you know when you have when you have a little back in there, it's always better. Absolutely. Now, in my opinion, the biggest win of your career was against UFC legend Jens Calder. How satisfying was that win? Um, that one for me was was extremely satisfying because I had just come off of uh, some uh, legal problems, and and uh, you know my life was at one point seemed like it was coming to an end, and and. Uh, you know, just uh, just things from my passage had had uh, you know kind of set up a roadblock, and to be able to get in there and fight against a guy like Jens and perform the way I did, um, man, it turned everything around for me, and it, it, it just you know it was just like the icing on the cake, you know. It, it, I I don't know how to explain it, man. Jens was like a hero of mine, you know. I I watched him fight in the early UFCs when when. Uh, you know, when he won the title and, and uh, watched him fight Uriah for five rounds. And, you know, uh, I'm just glad, you know, I was able to hit him early and, and, and get him out of there. It, but definitely it was one of the biggest, most satisfying fights that I've ever had. i got to imagine. Now, in your career, you fought a lot of skilled fighters. But who was the one fighter whose skills really surprised you once you got in the cage with them? Um, the... I would have to go with, and I don't know, that's a tough question. 
everybody, you know, always shows you something in another fight and then does something in, in your fight that surprises you. Um, the, the, the one thing that, uh, that Roger Webster did when we fought was um, he took some really big shots and, and, and wouldn't deter. He kept coming and kept coming. And um, as far as, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to be happy in a, in a loss, it had to have been a great fight. And uh, that, 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 that one fight for me was, was uh, um, it was satisfying only because, I mean, uh, you know, he, he, he never quit. And, you know, he kept coming forward and he kept coming after me. And, and he, he never stopped. So to, to, to have a fight like that was, was great for me, not, not, not just because, you know, uh, uh, we got fought of the night or whatever. It's just, I, I mean, fights like that, man, it make, make you a better fighter all the way around. And uh, if I could do that rematch at any weight, uh, I, I would gladly take it any time. Yeah, I know I'll never forget that fight. I saw it one live, and it was just insane. <laughs> now, now, your teammate, uh, Kerry Veneer, recently signed with Bellator. What do you think yeah, the future man. holds for him in this industry? Man, Kerry, Kerry's a phenomenal athlete, man. He, you know, he, he came here to, to, when he came, moved into the house with us and, and uh, started training. We always knew he was really athletic. But um, the thing about really athletic guys is uh, sometimes their work ethic isn't as good as, as somebody like mine. Like, I have to work twice as hard to Kerry to be as good as he is at one thing. He has to work half as hard to be really good. But um, what I noticed about Kerry was that, uh, you know, he, he's not that way. He's extremely athletic, but he works so, so hard, man. And, and uh, that, that, you know, is a tribute to his success now. And, and I think, uh, you know, at 155, he, you know, I, I think the champion is uh, who's the champion in Bellator. Uh, uh, 155 is uh, Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez. I think uh, I think that uh, that uh, uh, Kerry would be able to give Eddie Alvarez fit, you know, at, at that weight because I mean he's a phenomenal athlete and uh, he's got a really good chin. He's a southpaw and uh, he's an outstanding wrestler, man. So so I'm I'm excited to see you know how, how far he goes. And I mean for for Kerry, he's the only thing that can hold himself back because if, if he really lets go, he can. Uh, he, you know, he, he, he can definitely become a title contender up there really quick. All right. Now uh, now, now for the easy question. What are your okay. thoughts and predictions for the fight between your teammate George St. Pierre and Dan Hardy? Uh, it definitely George St. Pierre all the way through. Um, I think Dan Hardy's a great fighter. He's a really good striker. But, um, you know, everybody thought Thiago Alves was a great striker, and you see what George did to him. Um, George is definitely on another level right now. I, I, it, when that guy comes in the train, um, I mean, you're, you're basically you're going in there wondering what, you, what he's going to get you with. It's, it's not a matter of, of uh, how good you're going to do against him. It's like, I won't let him beat me with this, so he's going to have to beat me with that. But he, he, he's just definitely, man, he's going to be a champ for a good long while. i got to imagine he's just on such a tear right now. Well, yeah. Leonard, that wraps up our eight points for today. Thanks again for your time. Any shout-outs you'd like to give? Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, shop out always. You know, they, they, they're, they're the ones putting it together. You know, Shop Out House is giving a lot of guys opportunities. And, uh, uh, you know, my manager, Slim Dean, and also Brian Hamper, uh, all my teammates, Jackson, and, uh, you know, you guys, man, for putting getting the time to do this interview. No problem. Anytime you want, Leonard. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening to 8PointMMA.com's podcast number seven. Have a good one.